Katubi Westlanders, welcome to the Lost Holotapes, where we dive into the historical lore of the post-apocalyptic world of Fallout, including content from not worthy fun modes. We are nearing the end of our journey through Fallout New Vegas mods, and today we are taking a look at the impressive Havasu Blues mod. While its lore isn't quite extensive enough to stretch this video to a 20 minute mark, its events unfold beyond the Mojave Wasteland, significantly enriching the lore of the Sonora Wasteland, something we are truly fond of. This mod made me reconsider the advancement of the Legion and its territorial expansion presented in Fallout Sonora. To learn more, I recommend checking out the previous episodes of the Lost Holotape series, the playlist for which is in the description. And don't forget to support the project with your activity. Likes, comments, subscriptions. Once you're done with the pre-flight check, teleport to Searchlight Airfield, get into the plane and fasten your seatbelts. You're flying in search of the treasures of Big Bradley in Havasu. As we saw through the sky, let me provide some basic information about the mod. Havasu Blues was crafted by the talented modders Kuncobra and Akarion. It's quite fresh, it was released just a year ago. Of course, in 2023, it's not easy for Fallout New Vegas mods to capture everyone's attention unless they're total conversions. Nevertheless, this mod managed to break into tier D within a year and achieved an impressive conversion rate of around 7.5%. The mod's storyline is intimate and not heavily intertwined with global events. The city of Havasu desperately strives to maintain its independence, cut between the fires of the Legion and the NCR. Meanwhile, the courier seeks to uncover the treasures of a fearsome raider. But here in the Lost Holotapes we have our unique approach to mod analysis. In this regard, thanks to some speculations, we unveil the true potential of the mod, shedding light on the coast south of the Mojave, from Bullhead City to Parker Dam. Between Bullhead City and Parker Dam lies Lake Havasu, along whose shores Havasu Lake City was established in 1958 by an American businessman. What's noteworthy is that this businessman purchased a 19th century bridge from London, England, which was brought to this corner of Arizona and reassembled, connecting Pittsburgh Point Island, separated from the mainland by the artificial canal. Today the bridge stands as a significant landmark of Arizona. Before the city was built, before the Second World War, a military camp named Site 6 occupied the future city location. In the mod, this history is reflected in the creation of a military base with an automated anti-aircraft system. Have you started to see where this is going? I hope you've fastened your seatbelts. The world space can't boast with the scale, yet there are three subregions. The Lake Havasu Coastal Zone, Red World and Sandstorm. Red World is the territory of a pre-war quarry and mining settlement located near Mount Crossman, connected to Havasu via mountain tunnel. After the war, the area became shrouded in a reddish haze, somehow linked to its pre-war use. What's happening south of Havasu City is intriguing. From the south, it's isolated from Parky Dam by an eternal sandstorm blowing in from the Dune Sea. While it was primarily designed to set a boundary for players, the sandstorm could explain why the Legion didn't move north along the coast after destroying Parky Dam, but instead used Highway 93 to reach Hoover Dam. Essentially, the sandstorm protected Havasu from an early Legion invasion. Otherwise, integrating this mod into the narrative would have posed a challenge. Now, let's dive into the lore breakdown. However, I should clarify up front that I'm omitting the presence of Vault 47, nestled beneath the local airfield. Vault 47 is already claimed by Fallout New California, where it has far more lore. In Havasu Blues, we can't explore beyond the entrance lobby. We will also cut out the Deep Claw tribe, which settled in the mountains near the NCR outpost, as their exposition is too vague to attempt to say anything specific. Okay, during the war, Havasu Lake City survived, but became tainted with radiation. The city's residents turned into ghouls. We learn about this from a ghoul named Nigel, who later embarks on a journey. What happened before 2206 isn't clear, but by at least this year, the city ceased to be a haven for ghouls and instead became a refuge for smoothskins. In 2281, a doctor will reside in the city, inheriting his clinic from his grandfather, which indeed leads us to speculation about the timeline. New smoothskin settlers are not afford of ghouls, so they are not allowed to live among them. For context, it is worth reminding that prior to 2253, the NCR entered into Bullhead City and established a colony there, which was seized by the Great Hans in 2253, leading to the resignation of John Tibbet as the NCR president. In 2270, NCR General Aaron Kimball reclaimed the lost colony, established Fort Aradesh in its place and became a national hero, which contributed to his future election as president. Jumping ahead, it's worth mentioning that the NCR will have a presence in the Havasu Lake region. The four I've reconsidered NCR's eastward trajectory and presumed that their entry into Bullhead didn't come from the Mojave side, but rather from the direction of the Dune Sea. By 2271, the Legion had advanced significantly westward, reaching Parker Dam and defeating the entrenched Desert Rangers stationed there. Previously, I speculated that the Rangers retreated through the dam into the Dune Sea, 
or use Regional Highway 95 to head north, where they met the NCR, later joining their ranks. The presence of the sandstorm likely negates the option of evacuation along the eastern coast. Also considering that Parker Dam is situated on a cape, the Legion would have effectively blocked any evacuation route during the siege. The rangers likely left along the western coast, detonating the dam behind them. It's quite possible they turned back into Sonora through the bridge encountered slightly south of Havasu. Consequently, they would have visited a settlement and then moved northward to Bullhead, where they encountered the NCR. In 2272, Nigel returned to Havasu, only to find that over two centuries the city had become fully gentrified, and he was an unwelcome guest there. So he ventured to Red World, where he and few other ghouls established eagle cracks, an elevated settlement for ghouls on a cliff, shielded by the red haze and mountains from potential intruders. However, forced isolation and limited local resources hindered the settlement's development, and it constantly experienced population loss. Due to the sandstorm, the Legion couldn't move north along the Colorado River, so Highway 93 became the main artery. In February 2277, the Legion assimilated the twisted hairs in dry wells, and then entered the abandoned Fort Aradish, mockingly renaming it into Fort Abandon. Retreating the NCR blew up the bridge behind them, preventing the Legion from crossing the river. This was a very unpleasant turn of events for Havasu, as now the Legion could approach the city from the north. As for the NCR, after losing the fort, they headed south, possibly on the tip off of the Desert Rangers, who spoke of Havasu. Protected from the south by the sandstorm, it could serve as a base for attacks on the Legion along the eastern shore. They advanced along the Dune Sea towards the bridge south of Havasu and established an outpost on its western side. After the intense battle for Hoover Dam, escalating conflicts with local factions in the Mojave and the spread out front lines, the NCR can't afford to focus on Havasu. All they managed to do was establish a Havasu Lake checkpoint outpost on the eastern side of the bridge, likely just to contain a potential Legion breakthrough. Therefore, the NCR sends their worst and most unpromising soldiers to the outpost. Those they wouldn't mind sacrificing since the main defense line is through the bridge, which can be actually blown up. Snipers on the other side of the bridge prevent those stranded at the doomed eastern outpost from deserting to California, so those who desert either join local raiders or squad. If the Bull of Legion sees someone without a skirt, it snorts in charge, pointing its horns forward. Havasu couldn't escape its sights. The Legion advances from north to south, spotting the NCR's presence and establishing their Havasu Legion camp on the outskirts of Havasu, preparing for a possible battle. Havasu doesn't want to align with either the NCR or the Legion, so it closes itself off and introduces passport control. This also addressed the issue of immigrants from the north, pursued by the Legion, whom xenophobic Havasu didn't want on its streets. Groups of migrants set up a beachside RV camp by the shore. Those who weren't afraid of freighters and could sustain a wall house established a small settlement called Donkey Acres. The NCR deserters essentially settled in either one or the other. Within its walls, Havas organized three hotels, including a luxury one on Pittsburgh Point Island, and two caravan stops that transformed into a marketplace. Thus, passport control also ensured a flow of caps. Speaking of raiders, the region is home to the Big Bradley Gang, residing in a pre-war bunker, likely formerly belonging to the Enclave, though there is no clear evidence of this. Big Bradley was quite a successful bandit and managed to fill his bunker with tons of loot. With such treasures under his pillow, he couldn't trust anyone, so he rigged the bunker with explosive, connected to a device reading his vital signs. If anyone will dare to kill him, everybody dies. The events of the mod take place somewhere after April 28th of 2281, as this is the last known date from the Ghoul Doctor's Terminal in Eagle Cracks. The gameplay aspect of Havasu Blues doesn't introduce a ton of new and convoluted lore threads. The mod's events unfold quite straightforwardly. At the center of the story is a duo of treasure seekers, Rally and Paul. Rally discovered Havasu's existence, learned about Big Bradley and obtained access to his bunker. Moreover, he is a pilot of a pre-war plane, which engineer Paul refurbished before the journey. The mod begins with these two inviting the courier to join their adventure and become the third member of the team. Once everyone is ready, they board the plane and fly towards Havasu. To their misfortune, the plane is shut down by Chekhov's anti-aircraft defense, still operational at Site 6. Paul manages to grab the only parachute and jumps, landing sour near Donkey Acres and breaking his leg. A sympathetic mechanic from the settlement, following an unwritten code of engineers, takes Paul to Havasu's clinic. Raleigh's plane crashes near Eagle Cracks and Raleigh himself dies. Ghouls investigate the crash site, salvage anything useful, including the courier's gear, and bury Raleigh. After some time, the surviving courier awakens, shakes off the shock, looks around and asks, so, where am I? 
Of course it's not necessary for the courier to be the protagonist and we could imagine some hypothetical mercenary. Besides, during the first half of 2281 the courier is in California, delivering the platinum chip. I would even say that we don't really need a protagonist here as the factions and the situation will sort themselves out. For the most part the gameplay lore is tied to the fate of the Havasu settlement. Even Big Bradley isn't a significant player in the gameplay events. His role boils down to being the boss of the final dungeon, which is his bunker. The Legion, as usual, deploys spies to intercept NCR communications, allowing them to coordinate attacks on NCR patrols and caravans. Meanwhile, the NCR ambassador tries to persuade the mayor to accept annexation, as in that case the NCR can provide protection for the city. Eventually, the city's mayor agrees. Upon learning about the power shift in the region, the Legion launches a fierce attack on the city, but the NCR proves to Havasu that they can be relied upon and defend the settlement. Of course, to reach this point, the player needs to complete a series of quests that lead to the handshake between the mayor and the NCR ambassador, but we'll skip the details. Of course, you can take the Legion side and level the city and the NCR outpost to the ground. However, since I find the outcome of the Legion came and killed everyone quite boring, I'll prefer the NCR's victory. In any case, after the battle for Havasu, the player theoretically teams up with a group of bounty hunters to attack Bradley's bunker. Afterward, with the help of the same mechanic from Donkey Akers, the player deactivates the anti-aircraft defense. Though it's not clear what the point is now as the player takes a boat and sails back to the Mojave on it. I can't entirely remove Big Bradley from the narrative since he is the root cause of the entire journey, but at the same time I can't have him obliterated by the force of a lone protagonist just for a couple of thousand caps. So I'll just leave him in the region. Let him rob NCR caravans. I think the Havasu outpost will be abolished as the city itself will become the outpost. I also believe that the squad camp will be dispersed and they'll relocate either to Havasu or Donkey Akers, which will also fall under NCR control. And this concludes the overview of the Havasu Blues mod. Of course, when you try to squeeze 5 hours of gameplay into a lore breakdown, the video ends up being around 10 minutes long, but that's what it is. Personally, I'm very satisfied with the fact that we've fulfilled in a bit of a blank spot from Bullhead to Parker Dam. I hope you enjoyed this story as well. Consider giving this video a like, subscribe and write a comment. Also check my Patreon page. Don't lose or forget your passports and then we'll meet again in the Wasteland Wanderers. End of the holotape.